everybody. I pray this video finds you blessed. So this week I did some experimenting on some magnolia. This is chalk paint. I've always wanted to use chalk paint, but I didn't want to buy it in those big containers and end up not liking it for what I'm going to use it for. So I don't know if y'all seen the ads on Facebook or Instagram. The Real Milk Paint Company has been promoting their sample sizes with free shipping as long as you buy three to five of them. So they're $3.50 for a size like this. And I, let's see, I've already used out of this container what I put on this bowl. So you don't really need a lot unless you put a ton of coats, which is fine. But I liked mine with just one, I guess one coat, one application, I guess you'd call it because I only had to mix it up once. Um, it's one to one water to the powder, which is really great easy to mix, easy to apply. I just wish I would have used a shorter jar when I mixed it because I had to reach down in there. Anyways, on top of that, they're also um, doing samples and free shipping on their oils. So I purchased half and half, which is pure tongue oil and citru citronella oil, citrus oils, not citronella oil, that's wrong. Anyway, and then their hemp oil and their pure tongue oil, which that's what I used on this bowl. Now, pure tongue oil is food safe. So that's what I was concerned about this bowl is making it food safe. The milk paint is food safe as well. I'm sure like not on the inside, but on the outside is fine. There's no chemicals that can harm you, whatever they're safe for the environment, yada, yada, yada. Now, because of my time limits and constraints on applying finishes, I only put five coats. Now I say only because obviously I could build a high shine with pure tongue oil, but I just didn't have to, <laughs> I didn't have time to do that. So I put five coats. My main concern was just getting a nice, good, protective finish on this milk paint. I didn't, I wanted to, you know, be able to stand up, you know, for a while and being it's food safe, naturally you're going to be, you know, wiping this down and, and what have you. It does take some time for the tongue oil, even after you apply it to cure. I think it's like 30 days or something. I'm not absolutely sure. I'll put the link in the description below for this company, their products, what their recommendations of uh, finishes are for their milk paint products. I only put one finish on the bottom because one coat of tongue oil, I should say, because I didn't have, um, I'm limited on time. And so that's why, but I went ahead and um, used my abrasive paste to knock it all back because I kind of still left a rough, fuzzy, you know, finish on the inside even after five coats because I did not use steel wool in between and I'm pretty sure that's what you're supposed to do. I just, I didn't. This bowl is going to be part of a giveaway for Blue Line Turtings over in Instagram. I'll put the link for him in the description below. He's doing a 3,000 follower giveaway. I don't know to all, what all is included in the giveaway, but I do know this baby is. So <laughs> go over there and check him out, follow him, and then keep out, keep a lookout for what you have to do in order to enter to win for the giveaway. And yeah, so that's that. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I pray y'all have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless. I'm using a piece of magnolia. It's a blank that I cut back in March when I first received the tree when it was um, cut down, freshly cut down. So it was very green when I originally cut this blank and it's already, you know, pretty dry already. Well, dry as it can be for Florida. <laughs> I'm just shaping it out and it's very important to put a center um, crease or mark or something on your bowl blanks so that when, when you turn them around to get the tenons straightened out because the tenons also warp as well that you have something to line up center with. I didn't finish the whole outside bowl in this position because the uh, block that I use has a spongy type material on it, my my um, jam chuck, and it kind of causes the bowl to where you, the further you get out to the rim the more it likes to flex. So that's why I just turned it around and continued finishing the outside. I do apologize for the camera not being lined up and you can't barely see my tool.
I always like to try to remove um, the rim material first and get it established before moving on because most woods whether it's dry or wet it will flex you know the rim is is no longer being supported by material so that's why you see um, using the scraper and kind of getting that all established before I take more out of the center because the less that that's supported the more it's going to want to move on you like I said regardless to whether it's wet or if it's dry I sanded the inside of this bowl to 400 but the outside I only sanded to 320 because I knew I was going to do the milk paint and I wanted the milk paint uh, something to grip onto. I was afraid that if it was too smooth of a surface that there was less likely that it would stick. Now that could or could not be the case um, or necessary but that's my thought process. This milk paint was incredibly easy to apply. It's one to one, so however much you use of the powder, that's how much you use of water. I had to pour just a tad bit back in there because I dropped some water out of the, onto my bowl. I just wish I would have um, used a smaller jar so I didn't have to reach so far down with my paintbrush. It does foam up a little bit if you if you are too rigorous with it or what have you. They do sell a foam, a defoamer that you can purchase that helps cut down on the foam on the paint. Um, I didn't feel that it was necessary. I did get a little bit of bubbles um, that I noticed after I turned the camera off. And I just took my torch to it and it popped the bubbles just like you would for resin. It was no big deal. Um, and it, it finished just fine. It didn't harm it in any way. At the time of the recording of this video, the, the Real Milk Paint Company, blah, 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 <laughs> is offering samples for only $3.50, $3.50, with free shipping if you are purchasing three, and I think the limit is five. Um, I do not get any money for promoting their products or anything. I just was real interested in milk paint and was excited to see that I could get sample sizes and not have to buy a huge amount that I would never, you know, get through. using a makeup applicator to put on the tongue oil. Um, I have read somewhere, someone had posted either in the comments or maybe on Facebook I read in a group where the sponge makeup applicators are really good to apply certain finishes. Couldn't remember which finish they were talking about, but I figured I might as well try it with this one. It did seem to work really well and didn't leave any lines or streaks that you would normally get, but of course I did not put more than five coats on this bowl. So I don't know if I would have had streaks after I started being able to see the build of the finish. Um, like I said in the beginning, my time limitations made it to where I could not apply more than five finishes or five coats. I'm sorry. I had to come out and wait 24 hours. I did not sand in between because the, the tongue oil was soaking up into the, um, the bowl. It seemed like even with the, the milk paint, it seemed to just absorb it right up, um, even those five coats. The last coat, the fifth coat, seemed to start start in some places to actually, you could see the build, um, but not so much. I did not record all five coats you know, being applied. I did it the exact same way you see here for the first 
two or three that I filmed. Um, and yeah, so that's that's how I applied it. The like I said, the makeup sponge. You can get those at the Dollar Tree, Walmart. Um, I bought this bag. I think I found it at some like a Ross or something like that for 97 cents. They had them on on clearance. So they're I think they're all pretty much made the same. You don't have to go buy the most expensive makeup brush around. Um, I bought a pack of multiples so that way I can just toss them. For this application, I just kept the makeup sponge in a plastic Ziploc bag so I could reuse it to keep it from drying out and that worked really well. I didn't want to have to go through all of my sponges and uh, so all five applications I was able to use the same sponge. I use my old worn out scoring pad to apply my abrasive paste. I purchased these from Rookie Abrasives. All of my sandpapers and stuff I purchased through there. They also sell these scoring pads with the hook and loop on the back. And once they get worn out, um, I just, or, or clogged up, I use them to apply my abrasive paste. Um, some might argue and say that that's not a good idea, but it's easier on my wrists and I feel that um, I get a lot of success with my finishes uh, even with that on there I'm able to get a lot of even the finer scratches out really well so that's what I'm using on the end of my drill for applying my brace of paste painters tape on all of the nubs for the uh, cold jaws because I ran out of my um, cabinet liner stuff at least I ran out of stuff that wasn't dirty and filthy so <laughs> I just went ahead and put painters tape all around the edge it was kind of a pain in the butt but it did work so I'm not gonna complain it was it was effective <laughs> Thank you. 
I thank you all so very much for watching my videos and your wonderful kind comments, your tips, your tricks that you share with all of us. I just uh, pray y'all have a wonderful weekend. Take care and God bless. Your tongue all stinks. <coughs> smells a little.